Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I was very excited to come here uh, throughout this week. I wasn't gonna lie, I was not expecting as it turned out that I did today. I was not expecting this week many people to come up. I was doubting. I'll be honest, I was really doubting. But I really thank God for this opportunity, for this privilege to be here, to be able to speak and to share his word in front of you all today. Amen. Um, you know, I promise you, I do my best not to speak for three hours. Because <laughs> I'm telling you the truth that today, I like last night, I, I worked really hard, finished putting this, this sermon together. And I'm telling you, this is not gonna last for about 20 minutes. It's not gonna be a 20 minute sermon. You know, I love the word of God. I love talking about the word of God. When we come to church, we're supposed to be ready to hear his word. Uh, back then, I remember when I used to watch a lot of sports, three, four hours, all day I could watch sports. But when it came to the word of God, it, as soon as you come to church, it's like, is this thing over yet? All of a sudden, we're all, I'm ready to go home, ready to get up out of here. But over the years, as I began to study, the Lord began to take away those desires that I once had. And my mind began to focus more on his word. So now, I put his word above everything in my life. My very the word of God is my, is my stronghold. It is the authority of my life. The Bible says, in Psalms 119, 105, that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So it is very important that we study his word. His word will lead us to eternal salvation. And last, the Holy Spirit had gave me this sermon title, Perilous Time. Because I believe that it's important that we know the times that we're living in. We are living in very dark times, very serious times of history. And we need to be aware of our surroundings. We need to be aware of what's going on as people of God. This is not a time to play around, as we, many of us might have done in past time. This is a very serious time. And so, if you don't mind, I'm going to kneel and pray for the Holy Spirit to come and speak to us today. Kneel before the Creator and ask Him peaceful to come and speak to us. Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come here today to hear your word and to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, Lord, we humbly ask for your Holy Spirit again that you speak to us, Lord. Speak through me, Heavenly Father, for I am a willing vessel, but I am also a sinner in my sight. And Lord, I pray that you have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. The Bible says this. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despised of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of guidance but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Bible, we talk about perilous times. In the last days, perilous times will come. The word translated as perilous time means troubles, danger, difficulties, and stress. This sort of atmosphere will mark the last days. Now, Paul was not the only person that talked about the last days. He was not the only person that talked about the atmosphere of the last days. Jesus himself gave us signs and warnings. But there are two things that we're going to talk about. Two things that I want to point out. Because Paul is not just talking about the condition of the world. He's not, he, he, we're, going to talk, we're going to get into that. But first, I want to say, what causes these perilous times? The condition of the human heart. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know? See, all these, all these, all these, all these, uh, these characteristics that Paul has mentioned, all of them has to do with the human heart. The Bible says in Proverbs 17 that a man thinks with his what? Heart. Man don't think with this heart. He thinks up here. So sometimes when the Bible talks about the heart, it's talking about the human mind. The battle is over the mind. There are two powers, right? We know this. There's God and there's Satan, good and evil. And both of them want control over the mind. One wants you to willingly and openly give him, give him power over your mind. But the other one wants to forcefully have control over your mind. This is the battle that is happening right now. 
There is a war going on, spiritual warfare, the Bible calls it. And the war is over the human mind. Let's look at what the Bible says in Mark 7, 21 through 23. For from within, out of the heart of men, out of the heart of what? Men. men. Now, when Satan, when the human race fell, we became under the control of the enemy. We fell under sin. And so, when we're naturally born into the world, you know what the Bible says about that. I was shaping in iniquity. I was shaping in iniquity. We're born into sin. We're born automatically disobedient to the Lord. We're automatically living contrary to God's will. And the Bible tells that what the Bible gives us the, the insight of the heart of man. It says, out of the heart of man proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murderers, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, the evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Does not the Bible says that our righteousness is as what? Filthy rags. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. The human heart is evil. And so these characteristics that Paul mentioned is a result of our sinfulness. We're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about the condition of the world, and we're going to talk about the condition of the church in the last days. Now there's so much. There's so much. It's like hundreds of things in the Bible do this. We don't have time to fit it on here. We don't. We don't have time. But we do our best to try to break down what we can. Let's start with what Jesus had to say about the condition of the world in the last days. Remember I told you at the beginning that, the, the, that Paul was not the only one that talked about the condition of the last days, which would be before Jesus coming. Jesus also told his disciples, they were on the mouth. They asked him privately. They asked him for the signs of the times of when these things be. And these are just some of the things that Jesus mentioned. As he set up on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not met yet. For a nation shall rise against nation, and a kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence earthquakes and diverse places, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The Bible, Jesus has told us that in the last days, we already know the world has been messed up from the beginning, but he says it's going to get worse. He says it's going to intensify. He said that what? The love of many shall wax cold. I'm talking about the human heart. The human, Luke 17, 26 to 27, it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered to the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. What does the Bible say happened in the days of Noah? And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart with the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The thoughts of his heart well, was only evil. That means the Lord said there was no good thing. He see no good thing in man. It only waxed worse and worse. And the Bible says, Jesus tells us that in the last days, these things will happen again. And the first time it resulted with the destruction of the earth by the flood. But this time the Lord says, okay, the flood's not going to work. This time I have to come. I have to come this time and destroy sin completely. The next time the Bible promises that he's going to destroy sin with what? Fire. After this, sin won't rise again. See, the Lord's not playing games. He's telling us what's going on. And we're seeing it all over the world today. All over the world. And it's getting worse and worse. Without natural friends, people do not have remorse of the things that they do anymore. The people are out here killing. You hear about the human trafficking. You hear about the murders. You hear about the selfishness. You hear about the gun violence. People don't even care that they're putting other people in harm's way when they're firing at each other. All this year in New York, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, six-year-olds died from stray bullets. Now imagine your child, you're not there, and you get a phone call and say, hey, your child is innocent. He didn't do anything wrong. But at the wrong place at the wrong time, he's hit with a stray bullet. All because of the selfishness of men. 
that suffered no regard of human life whatsoever. Evil continually, the Bible says. That is the condition of the world. And we've been seeing it happen for almost the last 100, 200, 300 centuries, getting worse and worse. And the reason why the things don't happen is fruition, because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is restraining a lot of evil from happening for the sake of the saints and for the working of the gospel. That is the only reason why Satan has not taken full control of human heart. The Bible promises that my spirit will not always strive with men. One day God's going to say that's enough. And there's a reason why. I'm going to talk about that. The Bible suggests that the earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with what? Violence. Is the earth filled with violence today? It seems to me we can't get away from violence, whether it's entertainment, movies, television. You know, at one point in my life, I used to think that it was okay to watch movies. I used to say, I used to love movies, watch all kinds of movies, well, shooting, violence, everything. But there's a verse that God says, by what you talk about, with what you see, by uh, what you behold, you become changed. And that's when I started to realize. And also, that's when I, that's when I started to realize the importance of how these things that we watch, these things that we observe, the enemy pro program our mind with those things. And it begins to become a part of us. We start to become changed by the things that we watch. And all over you're seeing bias and people everywhere. People can't escape bias. People can't escape bias. I remember this, there's people that will look at me crazy when I tell them the best thing to do is to walk away, from, to, to get away from bias. It's like people tell me, oh, you're too soft, man. You're too nice. You're too nice. God told them to avoid violence, and they want you to walk right in. That's the kind of world we live in today. The Bible says, and God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. That verse says all flesh. Wow. Not some. There's only one man God said in the Bible that found righteousness out of God that was no one. That's scary to me. I mean, you look around, we got billions of people on the earth right now. And uh, we don't know how many people on the earth at that time. But the Lord said all flesh. And there was only one. Only one. It's a danger to fall in the crowd. It's a danger to fall in the crowd. The condition of the world. 2 Timothy 3.13. But evil man seduces shall wax. What everybody? Worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. Wax worse and what? Worse. In the last days, wax worse. And why does it wax worse and worse? What's the issue here? It's the human heart, right? It's the mind. It wax worse and worse because they what? Reject the truth. That's what makes it wax worse and worse. Because you know why? The more you disobey and turn away from the truth, the more Satan has power over the mind. That's what the Bible teaches. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Things that many people don't want to talk about anymore. We're going to talk about a little bit later. But the more we reject truth, the more Satan has power over our mind to control us. To the point where we can't help ourselves. I've seen it happen. You can, you can try all you, it's like, to a point where you can get so deep and caught up that the, I'm telling you, the only person who can break us from the power of sin is Jesus Christ himself, regardless. But when you reject truth over and over again, you resist the Holy Ghost over and over again, Satan just kind of sees more darkness. More darkness just takes over your life, just takes over your heart, until you just can't get out. At that point, it becomes, you see, it becomes natural. It doesn't look like you're doing that wrong. It doesn't feel like you're doing that wrong. It, it, it just becomes a part of you. Let's read. Let's, <sighs> Desire Age chapter 3, we call it The fullness of time had come. Humanity becoming more degraded through ages of transgression, called for the coming of the called for the coming of the redeemed. Satan had been working to make the gulf deep and impassable between earth and heaven. By his falsehoods, he had emboldened man in sin. It was his purpose to work out the forbearance of God and to extinguish his love for men, so that he would abandon the world to satanic jurisdiction. And this has happened before Jesus came the first time. Jesus had to come. He had to step in. And he's got to do it again. The Bible says there's a time of trouble coming that we've never seen on the earth. There's a reason why. A lot of you say, oh, uh, what, what a time of trouble. What, we, we've seen all kinds of stuff. We've seen everything. What God can't get any worse? Oh, trust me. God said it can get much worse. 
worse. It can get much worse. Let's see what it looked like. What, let's see. Desire of ages. Same chapter. The deception of sin had reached its height. All the agencies for depraving the souls of men had been put in operation. The Son of God, looking upon the world, beheld suffering and misery. With pity, he saw how man had become victims of, Satan, of satanic cruelty. He looked with compassion upon those who were being corrupted, murdered, and lost. They had chosen a ruler who chained them to his car as captives. Bewildered and deceived, they were moving on in gloomy procession toward eternal ruin, to death in which is no hope of life, towards night to which comes no morning. Satanic agencies were incorporated with men. The bodies of human beings made for the dwelling place of God. Made for the what? Is it your body the temple of the, of the Holy Ghost? But guess what happened? Guess what happened? It had became the inhabitants of demons. Instead of the Holy Ghost reigning in the human heart, in the human mind, it became a habitation of devils, demons. The devils were literally living in human beings. It says, the senses, the nerves, the passions, the organs of man were worked by supernatural agencies in the indulgence of the uh, violence lust, the violence lust, the very stamp of demons was impressed upon the continents of men. Human faces reflected the expression of the legions of evil with which they were possessed. That was the first time. The Bible says it gets much worse than that. And it's going to happen again, even more severity. Why? Because they what? Reject the truth. Legions of evil. Like, we're supposed to reflect the character of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine what it's like reflecting the legions of evil. Mm -hmm. When you begin to look like the devil himself, because the devil doesn't care about anybody. He cares about what? Self. The same human passion that we have in us today. We're all guilty of it. Self. Pride. That was the first thing that caused him, first of all, the Bible says, 16, the Lord had said about the first thing he mentioned, what? A proud look. That's the first one here. He, Lucifer wanted to be above God. He wanted to take his place. You remember that? And you know what the Bible also teaches? When the Bible says that in Revelation 12, when it says that the, uh, the devil made war in heaven, you know the war, there's a Greek word for it. I don't know what a possible might, but it's called like polymos, polymios, or something like that. But we get our word, the word politics from that. And you guys realize that it wasn't just a physical, it wasn't a physical, you know, it could have been some physical things that happened. But the Bible teaches that Satan was really, it was really a, the battle was a new ideology. Like the Satan came up with new ideas, new sinful ideas that went against the government of God. And that's the same thing that we're seeing here on this earth today. Satan's at war against God. Now, let's look at the condition of the church. I didn't want to spend too much time in the condition of the world. We know the world is jacked. But we already know the world is going to get worse and worse. But this is what we really need to talk about right here. The condition of the church. If someone thinks because we come to church every day that we all good, like the devil is going to sit back and say, all right, let me let y'all, you know, spread the gospel and reflect. No. Let's look at the condition of the church. Exodus 27. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not call him guiltless to take his name in vain. Uh, you know, this right here, you know at the end of uh, where he says, uh, having a form of godliness and denying the power they're in. Y'all remember that? Yeah. And it says that? What is this commandment right here? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God, what? In vain. Amen. That doesn't mean just saying, like, I used to think it's just like, oh my God, and all that stuff. But the interpretation's right here. We describe the Pharisees, the hypocrites, that Jesus called them. Look, 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 look at what Jesus said. How be in vain they do worship me. How be it in vain they do worship me. Or do they worship me? In vain. So you know that by this commandment, vain, this doesn't mean use the Lord's name in vain. It's also living. And his name in vain. Professing to be a godly person. Professing to be a servant of God. Professing to be a follower of Jesus Christ. But the Bible says this. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of what everybody? Man. 
Then the Bible says uh, our righteous have filthy rags and our ways are evil. For laying aside the what commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your own tradition. That was God's people in those days. God's people in those days. They set aside the commandments of God for their own ways, whatever suited them. Are we seeing that now? Is that possible? That we're doing that right here in God's house? Professing to be servants of the Lord, but if we're not living according to the commandments of God? First, let me, let, let's talk about something. Let's talk about truth. We talk about how the world rejects truth, right? We talk about how the church didn't reject truth. But let's see what the truth means. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus said he's the what, everybody? The truth. What else did Jesus say? Sanctify them, what does the Bible say? Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is what? Truth. So Jesus is truth, and what his word is what? Truth. What else is truth? Ephesians 5, 9, verse 9 of Ephesians 5, 9 to 10. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness, and what everybody is truth. Provide, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Amen. Let's look at it, the fruits of the Spirit. So by the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So what is also true? The fruits of the Spirit. And what is the fruits of the Spirit? The character of God. Amen. Proving what is acceptable to the Lord. What else is true? Psalms 119, 151. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are with everybody? True. true. Deuteronomy 413. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to what everybody? Perform. And even what? Ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Amen. What else is true to everybody? Ten His Ten Commandments. And he said, what right there? He commanded you to what? Perform. Perform. See, the reason why our church in many cases is divided is because of that right there. A lot of people say it's impossible to do that. We can't keep the commandments of God. We're not supposed to live by that. I can't change. God says otherwise. Amen. God says, I commanded you to perform. You know why? Because he gives us the power to do so. And this is one of the issues of the church that the scribes and Pharisees had. They had all kinds of traditions together. They came to church on Sabbath. They sung songs. They sung hymns. They did all kinds of things. But their heart was not right. They came out and in public speaking one thing. But inwardly and secretly, they were living another lifestyle. They had a form of godliness. You would have thought that these people, they were the teachers of the land in those days. They were supposed to instruct the people in righteousness. They were supposed to teach about the coming Messiah. They were supposed to teach about God. But, but instead, they were hypocrites. Jesus called them hypocrites. Why? Because they had a form of guidance, but they denied the power they're in. Truth. What's the more? We're not done yet. John 8, 32, 34. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you what everybody? Free. And then they asked him to the Jews, the Jews, this is the Jesus talking to the Jews. And the Jews are like, oh, we, we ain't have to, we were never a body to any man. But did you want to talk about bodies, man? He said, like, you know, he said, like, uh, how he said it? Jesus said, brother, I said it to you, who served to commit a sin, or what? Serve a sin. The Bible says we are slaves to sin. Anytime we sin, we are a slave to sin. Remember, the Bible says, two masters. You can only serve one or the other. If you miss sin, you are a servant of sin. Oh no, a lot of people don't want to accept that. I, I, I am a servant of sin. Now, I'm sanctified, clean, and all that stuff, and they still live still living the lifestyle that they live. The Bible says right here, Romans 6, chapter 63, to know ye not that to whom ye you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to him ye obey. Whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness, but God, you think that you were the search of sin. You have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which is delivered. Being then made free from sin, you became what by the servants of righteousness. 
And Romans 6.22, but now being made, what? Free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto what? Holiness and to the end everlasting life. Amen. The Bible tells us that we come to Christ. We give our life to him. We surrender our life to him. We don't stay the same person anymore. Amen. We're supposed to do a 180. God turns the human life around. He changes us. He cleanses us from sin. That's why David said, created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. He knew that he was so sinful, he prayed and asked God to renew a right spirit within me. The whole purpose of the gospel is for the Lord to change our heart and free us from what? Sin. But there's a lot of doctrine going on nowadays that are really teaching against us, even in our own church. We don't even believe that that's possible anymore, some of us. I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. And even if you got people, you know, I can't, I don't have time to go against, to, to bring up all the opposing scriptures that people use. But you got people that say, oh, just be Jesus, just be Jesus, just be Jesus. That's fine. You're not talking about, but what did we just go, what was truth again? Jesus, his word, the fruits of the spirit, his ten commandments. You preach Jesus, you preach everything else. Amen. The whole Bible leads us to Jesus. The whole Bible teaches us about Jesus. But we are living in a time where people are saying, oh, we don't need the rest of that. It's Jesus by himself. And they're not talking about Jesus by himself. I don't know what Jesus they're talking about because the evidence is right here. These are the things that divide the church. These are the things that divide us. Say it, Moses. That's why he causes confusion. He's the author of confusion. God said, I'm not a God of confusion. That's Satan's job. Look at some extra points. None of the apostles or prophets ever claimed to be without sin. Men who have lived theirs to God. Men who would sacrifice life itself rather than knowing to commit a wrong act. Men who God has honored with the violent power have confessed the sinfulness of their own nature. They have put no confidence in the flesh, have claimed no righteousness of their own, but they have trusted the holy and the righteous of Christ. So will be all who behold Christ. What does the Bible say? By what we behold, become what? So who should we be looking at? Jesus. Oh, I'm going to stay the same. I'm going to Jesus. I, I'm going to have it. Well, if you understood the true power of Jesus, you would know that Jesus is going to keep you the same. Amen. Amen. Because our ways are what everybody? Evil. Unrighteous. We are, we're not even worthy to stand for the presence of the Holy God. We, we don't, I don't think we understand the power of God. I think we undermine it. That's what we do. We undermine it. We don't take God seriously. God's word. The thought that the righteousness of Christ is imputed to us, not because of any merit on our part, but a free gift from God, is a precious thought. Amen. It is God's gift to us. We didn't deserve it. That's why the main scripture says we save under grace, and not by our works, because it is the grace of God. It is God's gift that we are able to be brought into righteousness again. We have lost it, but God says, I'll give you a chance. He told us that. I'll give you a chance. I will and Jesus came so we could live through him. Denying the power of their enemy. Two more points. Isaiah 116. This is my favorite one. Everybody says, oh no, you, you know, watch you, make you clean, and do what? Put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes. Cease. What did I say? Cease. A lot of everybody, I can't hear y'all. Cease. To do what? Evil. Evil. Isaiah 118. Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Sounds like to me that the Lord is cleansing us. He's changing us around. He's changing our sinful behavior into what, everybody? Righteousness. Ephesians 2 8, 8, uh, 8 through 10. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his what everybody? Workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should what? Walk in them. What did that say? Walk in them. We're supposed to be walking in obedience to God's word. Jesus gives us the power to do that. Now, if you are saying, I'm a follower of Jesus, and you're doing everything else, that God says it's sin, works of the flesh. Many, there's many scriptures that say that. What did the Bible say? We are what? Light. The Bible says that all men are light. Who's the father of light? The devil. And who did the, Jesus call the scribes and Pharisees who were hypocrites? He called them, ye children of the what? Devil. 
See, we all, sometimes we be thinking that we're all children of God, but I be trying to tell people, we're not all children of God. Not according to the scripture. We was all created by God. God wants us to be his children. But there are those of us that are really choosing to be children of the devil. Liars, the Bible says. That's why Jesus said in the, in the time to come, where people come and say, I've done this in my name, I've done that in your name, and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, Jesus look at them and say, oh, depart from me. I never knew you. You know why? Because you didn't even give your heart to me. You can go and feed the poor, you can go and do this and boast and show everybody and show up and say, hey, everybody, you know, look what I'm doing. You're not giving, you're not giving God the glory. Or you can put on a deceitful act. You know the Bible talks about saving yourself. God says, oh, oh, I would be everybody, you know, they look at you as a good person. They say, oh, this person's good. But I know who you really are. That's what the Lord says to people when he turns people away that day. And it's not because he just, oh, he don't want them happy. It's because they rejected the truth. It's hard to try to again. The earth was dark through this admission of God that the gloomy shadows might be light and the world might be brought back to God. Saying the seventh power must be broken. This cannot be done by force. The exercise of force is contrary to the principles of God's government. He desires only the service of love. And love cannot be commanded. It cannot be won by force or authority. Only by love does love awaken. Yes. To know God is to love Him. His character must be met. What does that word say? <laughs> Manifested in contrast to the what? Character of Satan. His character must be manifested. That was the whole war. The whole war in the Bible was Satan said that this. This lifestyle, this, 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 this loving character, all this stuff, this is, this is not, this is not good. He said, I got a better, I got a better government. I got a better system than you, Lord. And God said to know you have to love. And what the Bible says, if you love me, you will do what? Keep my commandments. The Bible said, let's keep, let's keep what the Bible says. It says, uh, this work only one being in all the universe could do. Only he who knew the height and depth of the love of God could make it known. Above the world's dark night, the Son of Righteous must rise with healing in his wings. That's Malachi 4 2. Only Jesus could have done it. That's why he came here. This is a war. Jesus had came here so we could know how to live. So we can what? Contrast the character of Satan. Can't do that. You can't do that. You send you a follow of Jesus, you still look like Satan. The Bible says that Satan is the what? The enemy. He's our adversary, the Jews of the brother. God says, you can't have no allegiance to him. Our whole hearts have to be surrendered to God. Yes. We have to be full, wholehearted way to overcome the power of sin. Because if we don't, we're not going to heaven. I mean, I tell people all the time. A lot of people think we can keep sinning, we're going to heaven anyway. We ain't going nowhere. We're going to be lost. We're going to find ourselves on the other side. God is telling us that we cannot live in, in companionship with the devil. We can't live in companionship with sin. Because the Bible says, Jesus, I can set you free. Amen. Free from sin. That means you and I, we can be what? Overcomers. Yes. We can't be overcomers if we over here say, oh, yeah, that's Jesus, and leave everything else. No, don't worry about that. Say it's that word against God's church. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 17, and by the way, this chapter, this whole chapter really just talking about Satan just attacking, he attacked the woman, he attacked the church, he attacked Christ, this whole chapter, the whole chapter talking about Satan just attacking, 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 and this is why. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's why Satan is at war. See, he don't care if you if you're in the world. He don't, he say he don't care about you, you know, because he already got you. He already got you from you out there. Say so he don't care about that. He don't care. But what he do care about is the people who's going to keep the commandments of God and have a testimony of Jesus Christ. The people who live righteously, who live in contrast to the will of the devil. That is what Satan is after. So he's doing everything he can. For the world, he tries to do his best to keep them away from the truth by bringing all kinds of distractions, all kinds of evil, all kinds of everything. And then the church, he said, okay, I got an idea. I'm gonna come up there and I'm gonna cause some little confusion. 
I'm going to start mixing truth and error. Woe well, unto him that put darkness to light and light for darkness, the Bible says. That's what Satan did to, 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 to bring down the, the human race. He repeated what God said to add a little extra and lied. And that's what's happening. His taxes have not changed. That's what he's doing in our church today. And that's how so many churches are divided. So many churches have fallen away because we don't want to accept the fact that we have to keep the command of God. And by that, by keeping the command of God, first have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Can't live, we can't live a sinful life. You know, as a Christian, I learn to be, you know, a Christian every single day. I have learned that as a Christian, I didn't even give up things that I like. Because the things that I like were very sinful and harmful to me. And the Lord says, Matthew, God put that down. My sacrifice is greater than your sacrifice ever, he said. God put it down. You gotta stop doing this. You gotta stop doing that. You gotta turn away from this evil. This is what the devil don't want to see. That's why the battle is so intense. That's why we are at war. That's why the enemy is trying so hard to destroy your lives every single day. He does not want you to make it to heaven. He doesn't want you to reflect the character of Christ. He wants to destroy your very soul. He is not a friend. He is the devil. And he works day and night. Him and his little buddies, they, they work day and night looking for strategies how they can cause us to fall. God is calling for witnesses. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. So, you know, it's interesting because in, you know, in the, the chapter before chapter 3, the only way you can know about the true character and love of God is if you do what? Study. The Bible says study to show that self approval to God. We have to study his word. And then Paul tells us the next word what's going to happen as a result of people who don't study. And in this chapter, he says that after you get done with study, he tells us what we're going to do as a church. The Bible says in, the, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, it says in the latter time, some will depart from the faith. Some will depart from the faith. That's what the Bible says. The spirit of said a lot of times some will depart from the faith and get heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What are doctrines of devils? Oh, in truth and error. That's really all it is. The Bible makes it very clear. Some will depart from the faith. The true testimony of Jesus Christ in the latter times. That is why the Bible says the latter times are perilous. Because it's perilous because men do not know the difference anymore. They don't see the difference in us anymore. They come here, they look around, and they say, oh, uh, you got to look just like them. Yes. What I got to be here for? I'm out of here. That's why the times become so perilous. It's because we're looking at the times of the days of Noah, where God says, all flesh. You know, they follow up. You know, Jesus himself even asked the question. He says, you know what he says? He said, will I really find any faith on the earth? Now, when Jesus starts asking questions, that's the problem. He said, when I really, will I really find faith in the earth? The Bible says a ring. It's going to be a small group. You know, I know we like the many of our churches and people, we brag about numbers. We brag about, I've never been a man of numbers. The Bible just makes it very clear. It's not going to be that many people as we think. We pray that numbers are going to be great from through all the ages. But the number of the lost is always greater than the number of the saved. Mm -hmm. Always. So for us, we take pride in these numbers, and we just, oh yeah, let's just baptize, and you know, all that. we baptize hundreds, we baptize five, and all that stuff. The vast majority of probably got in there for the wrong reasons. We want to know. The Bible makes that very clear that a lot of people are going to think that they're going to go to heaven, but they're not going. And I don't want to be that person. I'm trying to be saved. You guys want to be saved? Amen. I'm trying to be saved. That's why I said, Lord, help me to live by your word every day. I know I'm imperfect. I know my I know myself. You know, because God revealed myself to me. My ways are evil. And I need a savior. Amen. His sacrifice means everything to me. Amen. God is my life. He's supposed to be all of our lives. That is the only way we can overcome sin. There's no other way. And as we understand this, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 5, says, I charge you therefore before God. See, Paul is not playing no games. When he talking to Tim, he says, I charge you before God. He tells us. 
and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead and his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own flesh, their own lust, shall they heap to themselves, teachers, having itchy ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. They shall be turned unto faith. But watch thou in all things, and do the work of the evangelists, yeah. make full the proof of thy ministry. Paul said, okay, now we got to get out there. We got to share the gospel with everybody we can, every single day. Not whether it's by preaching the word or by character. See, sometimes you can't just straight up preach to somebody. Some people don't want to hear it, but sometimes you got to see a character. That's what's going to make the difference. There's the character. That's something. That and that's why he said, endure affliction. And let me tell you something. I, if, you, if anybody knows the Lord or is getting to know the Lord, you know that when God has you to do something to witness to other people for the sake of that soul in hell, it is not about you at all. He will put you through all kinds of stuff just to reach one person. Amen. Just like he himself said, I would have died. And just like Jesus himself would have died if it was just one person that I was going to accept. He puts that same love into our hearts. We begin to reflect Jesus Christ. That is what Satan don't want us to get to. Satan was selfish. His heart was wicked. Sinful. And God said, I've given the human race a chance. We got to get out there and we got to share this with people. We got to live it. Not just speak it. Live it. Every single day is our life. Every single day. We should be praying and fasting and asking God to help us overcome. Help us reflect the nature of the character of Jesus Christ. Help us to turn away from our addictions. Help us to turn away from the evil of our doings. Help us to cease to stop hating one another. Help us to stop not caring for one another. Help us to stop not looking after one another. To stop hating, not loving, and, and everything else that falls in the category of sin. To turn away from every single character of human nature. To turn that, our characters around. Because the human nature is evil. It's evil. That's what the Bible says. And none of us have any right here to look down on anyone else. Because we're all wicked. We have to pray for the fruits of the Spirit. We have to ask God to help us to have those characteristics. And then we have to share with somebody else. That is the power of the God. That's what Satan don't want to see. That's why he's at war with the church. He's at war. It's a balance between him and God. But he's so angry. The Bible says, you know, he has it a short time. So as the time gets closer, the harder and the more Satan will work to disrupt this work. Are you want to be you want to be a witness for God? Amen. You want to be a witness for Christ? Amen. I do. I know I got Satan. I I, I don't want nothing to do with him. See, as I start to learn about the scriptures, I learn how. Living a sinful life under the darkness and power of Satan is not good. He'll start to make it look like it's fine. But then all of a sudden, everything just collapses. And then you're wondering what happened. Wondering what happened. You get ready to make an appeal. You get ready to make an appeal. We're going to have an appeal song. I want us to really think hard. I want us to walk out of here. I want us to just listen here and say, okay, I'll get some. Yeah, we're out of here. Let's go, everybody. Let's leave. No. I want us to really think, to really meditate on God's word and listen to the Holy Ghost speak to us. Listen to the Holy Ghost speak to us. This needs to be a day-to-day -day thing. Not just one day, not just two days. This needs to be the rest of our lives. Jesus loves every last one of us. He loves us. He wants us all to be saved. You want to be saved? Did I preach today? You sure did. I told y'all, I was praying like, you know, I said, Lord, I want to come up there and go on the show. I want to deliver your message. Amen. It's time that we learn to deliver the message of God and live it. Amen. It's enough playing church. That's not getting us anywhere. That's not what's going to win the souls. What's going to win the souls is the character and the power of God working through us Amen. every single day of our lives. Amen. And so after the, uh, uh, the appeal song, we're going to pray. And if anybody wants to join me, we can. We're going to come forward and pray together as a family in Christ. That's who we are. We are to be united under the power of God. The Bible said the apostles were on one accord. They prayed together. Jews and
Gentiles alike. Set aside their differences. True power of the gospel. You can't get ahead when we hate people. Mm. We're not going. Whether they look different from us, whether they're from another race, whether they're from another culture, whether because they have another personality. If you hate someone because of any of those things, we're not going. Mm. God was teaching them the same thing. And he's teaching us that today. So we will pray, and I'm so grateful that I've had the opportunity to come share the word with you all. But the things that we're going to pray for, we're going to pray for God to work in us, to change our hearts, make us new creatures in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're about to have a benediction, and I got to say, if you want to come forward and join me in prayer, you can or not. I just ask everyone to stand where they are. So we can close our prayer. Amen. That was beautiful. Yes, amen. Thank you, brothers. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the word that you spoke to us today. Heavenly Father, it is such a blessing for us to come together as a family in Christ to hear your word. And Lord, as we have learned today, we are sinners, and we are in need of a Savior. And our hearts are wicked, Heavenly Father, but we need a transformative power to take place in us. And that can only be done through Jesus Christ. We need you, Lord, to change our hearts, to make us new creatures so we can learn to walk righteously in Jesus. You said to walk in the Spirit and not the flesh. Continue to teach us your ways, Lord. Continue to teach us to be obedient to your commandments. Continue to teach us to love one another, to have the fruits of the Spirit, because within ourselves, we can do nothing. Father in heaven, we need you now. We need you now and forever, every single day of our, our lives, Lord. There's not a single moment that we do not need you. Heavenly Father, have your way in our lives. Have your way in the lives of your people and the churches. Remember those that are suffering, that are struggling, that are going through some kind of battle, there could be something going on that we don't know that you know, Heavenly Father. We're asking that you step in and rescue your people because Satan is at work to destroy us all. And Heavenly Father, we can be free from the destruction of the enemy. You promised us eternal life. You promised us a place in heaven. You promised that all those that live godly, Heavenly Father, that, that we will suffer persecution on the earth, but as a result, we will make it to heaven. You say, great is our reward in heaven. So Heavenly Father, we are looking forward to that day of your coming. We are looking forward to the plans that you have for our life, because our life down here is only temporary. For you have a better place for us, a paradise, that we cannot even imagine right now. Our minds can't even think to the things that you have for us. We don't want to miss out, Heavenly Father. We want to be saved. We want to be sealed forever. Help us, oh God, and have your way. And we will be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name.